Hello, my name is Brad Heller. Welcome to the Heller Approach Professional Acting Studio YouTube channel. I want to thank you all again for being supportive and checking out our videos, writing great comments. Just a couple of things I wanted to throw out to you. If you like these videos, a lot of people don't know this, but we uh, post videos quite often also on Instagram at The Heller Approach, also on our Facebook page at The Heller Approach, and on Twitter. Um, so if you like these videos, those videos are a little bit different because they actually show me teaching in my class, but a lot of people seem to learn stuff from watching those videos too. So if you like these, I think you might like those as well. I want to tell you two brief stories that have to do with what I'm going to talk about today. Many years ago, when I didn't really know how to act, I auditioned for a play. And when I was done with the audition, I saw that they were laughing, and I left there feeling really good. Didn't get the role. Later found out it was a heavy drama. <laughs> and uh, getting them to laugh was probably the worst thing I could have done. Anyway, many years later, I, I ended up doing another play at a really reputable theater. Uh, and the director, at one of our initial rehearsals, he said, you know, it was a musical actually, in this musical, um, we're gonna get people to go on, on a roller coaster and we're gonna get them to laugh, to get them to cry, and it's just gonna be incredible. And as soon as he said that, I knew the play was gonna fail. Why? Because of one of the things that Don Richardson taught me, and that is making sure it's clear to you what style of entertainment you're playing. And that's what I wanna talk about today. What is the style of entertainment I'm playing? What is a style? <clears throat> a style is a drama, a comedy, a farce. Those are three of the number of styles, for example, but those are probably the three that you're going to see the most common. A style of entertainment is the kind of entertainment you're playing and how it's supposed to affect the audience. For example, a drama. The goal of a drama is to move the audience and get them to feel. The goal of a comedy is to amuse us. The goal of a farce is to give big laughs. A drama, for example, could be a movie like Raging Bull with Robert De Niro. Another style, mystery. The goal is to create tension, create suspense, kind of like you're pulling a rubber band tighter and tighter and tighter. You're making the audience get on the edge of our seat. And that's the goal of a mystery. <clears throat> Sounds of the Lambs. That's a mystery. A comedy. A movie like When Harry Met Sally is a comedy. A comedy, by definition, is a normal view of people in comedic situations, and the goal is to amuse the audience. A farce, we're talking about very heightened characters in heightened comedic situations, and the goal of a farce is to get big laughs. What is a farce? A farce is a sitcom. A farce is a big, broad comedy that you're going to see, where <clears throat> They're doing crazy stuff. They can hop up on tables. They can do really funny, broad pranks. So we got to know what style of entertainment we're playing when we approach the material. How do I do that? By understanding the definition of the style you're playing. If you have a chance to get the book, Acting Without Agony, an alternative to the method, make sure you get the second edition by Don Richardson. He's got a great chapter in there, and he talks all about the styles of entertainment that you're going to encounter. And make sure that whenever you're approaching a piece of entertainment, that you're approaching it correctly. Why is this so important? One of the things Don also said is that all good art is simple. And what does that mean? <clears throat> I don't know. What I th how I interpret that? Look at Van Gogh, the painter. What does he paint? A bowl of fruit. And it's sort of his take on that bowl of fruit, the sky, the night, stars, simple. If you look at Mozart, look at his, or listen to his music, the tunes are rather simple, but it's what he does with those tunes. The audience needs a simple story to follow in order to enjoy it and not get confused. If the audience starts to get confused, you lose them. It's just a simple fact. And you're going to find movies that don't really succeed very well. Frequently, they don't stick to one style. It's not to say, look, in drama, I can have a drama and have some funny moments. But we're talking about the emphasis of the material. What is the overall purpose of this piece? 
A great example is an old movie called Mad Dog and Glory with Robert De Niro and Bill Murray. It's a great example of a drama with some funny moments. And when you watch it, you're going to see this, the goal of drama is to move us. Now, again, we can have light moments in there. In contrast, I can have a sitcom, a big broad comedy that is all about big laughs, but then I can have a tender moment occasionally as well. It doesn't mean that you can't have one or the other in the style. We're just talking about the foundation, the thrust of the piece, and how you're supposed to affect them. In sitcoms, when we're talking by definition, a sitcom is heightened characters in heightened comedic situations, and the goal is to get big laughs. Now, in order to pull off a sitcom, you've got to understand two things. One, no matter what character you create, the characters always have to be honest and believable and what's called creditable, worthy of belief. You can't just get up there and be funny and not adhere to the principles that we have on our planet of how people interact with each other, how people react to each other. You can be broad and funny, but whatever you decide to do, it's got to be what's called creditable. What is a heightened character? If you have a chance to see a, a movie called A Serious Man, it's a Coen Brothers film. In fact, you can pretty much count on any Coen Brothers movie is going to have what's called heightened characters. <clears throat> heightened? Heightened characters are very strange characters. Like, they exist or could exist on our planet, but there's just not a lot of them. And maybe I'm playing a, a president, you know, and I can make my president kind of strange and maybe a little weird, but even if I'm a weird character, I still have to abide by the principles that we have on our planet. I can't just be funny. It looks stupid, right? And that's when you start getting into crap bad shows that you find yourself being bored. So if you decide that you're going to sort of venture into the sitcom world or any big broad comedy or any comedy for that matter, make sure that you create characters that are creditable, believable, worthy of truth, very important. If you don't do this, you will not get the part. And if you do get the part and you're, and you're not doing this, the, the production is not going to be good. Why? How do I know this? Well, because the audience needs characters they can connect to, even in a broad farce. They need real people. They need people that they can go and watch and they go, oh, that reminds me of me or that reminds me of somebody I know. So no matter what the style, always create these believable, creditable characters and ask yourself, could this person exist? Are they abiding by the laws of human behavior? And the answer always has to be yes. As weird as the character is, still has to abide by the principles of human behavior. If you watch an old show many years ago, Seinfeld, and you watch a character like Frasier on that show, really nutty, crazy character who's always kind of bouncing in and bouncing out, maybe there's nobody on our planet like Frasier. Maybe he's the only one, but he still abides by those laws. You know, he's still, when he's reacting as weird as he is, he's reacting the same way people, how they operate, whether it's like how they hear, how they react, how they look, how they, they don't perform it. He reacts the same way we react in real life, as crazy as his character is. So again, make sure that when you're auditioning for a piece, filming a piece, ask yourself, what is the goal of this piece? Is the goal to get big laughs or is the goal to move the audience? Just note that sometimes laughs can kill a moment, ruin it. Let's say it's a really heavy, intense moment in a drama and you become, you try to do something funny, kills it. Director will be very upset. So I hope that this topic of styles of entertainment is going to help you when you go out there and you start auditioning or if you're filming and you have a new piece of material. As I've said before, we've been getting questions and I want to make sure that I uh, answer some of them when I can. Here is one from Claire Bear. It's a fun name. Here's her question. I was wondering how to be in the moment while doing a one-person monologue when there is no one to react to and try to keep it believable at that time? Great question. How do I do that? Well, that comes back to sort of learning how to act 
and prepare a piece when you don't have anybody to work with. First and foremost, you've got to remember that a monologue is a scene. A monologue is a scene. It really is. A monologue could be, you know, a scene where I'm in a scene with somebody else and I'm doing all the talking and the other person is there listening. A monologue could just be me by myself talking to myself. But it's still a scene. When you're working on your monologue, and let's say you're doing it with an imaginary scene partner, you know, and I'm doing all the talking. Let's say I'm playing a character and I'm confronting somebody who's wronged me, and, I, and I'm doing all the talking because I'm confronting them. How do I do that? Well, the first thing that you got to remember is that even in a monologue, Acting is the ability to receive and react. So what you have to do, in a sense, is create in your imagination that person. So you kind of look there and you see, don't get lost in the, you know, the real details of the person and what they're, exactly how they look, but just get kind of a hazy vibe of what they look like. If you want to get more clever and creative on what they look like in your imagination, so just kind of imagine that scene partner in front of you now. And I kind of see them now. I'm doing this with you. And I see the person. Now, when I'm looking at this imaginary person that I'm going to have to react to, why do I have to react? Because that's what people on earth do. I can't perform it because if I perform it, then I'm fake. So I have this imaginary person there. And what I see, I'm not going to get lost in trying to create their reactions or to create their face or create their look while I'm actually in the scene. Why? Well, because if I do that, then my objective has changed from the objective of my character to a new objective, which is to create a reaction that I can react to, thus I'm not in the scene. How I do it is I kind of see a hazy version of that person in front of me and I remind myself to just react to that hazy version and see where it takes me. That to me is the best way to do it. Not get lost in creating them, but just react to the hazy vibe in front of you. Periodically, you're going to sometimes see little flashes of the, emerg uh, of the imaginary person. But just remember, when you're doing it, keep reminding yourself to react to the imaginary person and not perform it to the imaginary person. I hope that helps. I want to thank you all again for uh, tuning in and subscribing to our channel. Also, by the way, if you do appreciate the videos and you learn something, you may or may not know that I'm, a, I'm kind of an animal person, so instead of uh, maybe paying for classes, maybe you could donate a little bit of money to your local charity for, uh, for animals to prevent cruelty to them or those animals that may have been uh, um, hurt or damaged or, or relocated from uh, the, these hurricanes. So uh, that, that's always a, a worthy cause that I'm, I'm always kind of striving for. So anyway, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe to our Heller Approach YouTube channel. Go to our Instagram page at The Heller Approach, Facebook uh, at The Heller Approach, and Twitter the same. I hope this was helpful. Remember, make sure that you break down the style of entertainment, and we will have more videos coming. Thank you again for your support. And keep acting. And I'm going to add one little thing. When you're acting, don't perform. Make sure you react and just let it happen and keep it real. Keep reacting, don't perform. We'll see you next time.